Yo, what's up guys? I'm back for another short video because the last one did so well, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm back to do a short update on some of the games that I have got for Switch as well as uh, two CDs, just two, so I might as well get them out of the way just to uh, bore you, I guess, and drive you away. Anyway, first up, it's actually part of a game, so I'll introduce the game and then I'll introduce the CD. Fuck. Hi guys, I'm back uh, in between cuts. I accidentally dropped all my games and I spent like a bajillion years picking them up and uh, putting them right back where they need to be. Anyway, back to the CD and the game. So this time hopefully I don't drop everything. It's a Kiba Strip Undead and Undressed Director's Cut. A long ass title, I know. And you know what? We're freaking hype right the fuck away because we got, it's not a manual, but it's a comic book. Comic book inside the freaking Switch game. Hype, baby, manual squad hype. I'm gonna say it anyway. We have the exclusive comic book and we have the actual game itself. And now the game itself is the sequel to Akiba's Trip. This one was originally on the Vita, I believe, whereas the original, original Akiba's Trip was actually originally on the PSP and then later ported to various systems, you know. Whereas this one was a Vita exclusive to begin with. And uh, on top of that, it came with, believe it or not, a uh, CD with music selections. And this is actually not on Discogs, so I can't update my Discogs collection. That's super annoying, so... <laughs> Yeah, um, the CD is all right. It's mostly just like idle shit. I don't really care about that all too much. I'll probably get rid of it at some point. It also came with a bunch of like art posters, little mini art postcards or whatever. But I got rid of those because I don't really need it. I gave it to one of my friends. So I know crazy, right? It came in like a whole box and I just got rid of all of it. I'm a real collector. I know, right? Ding. Akiba Strip, uh, the sequel, is basically more of the same with better graphics, better uh, better pacing, and uh, I haven't gotten past the tutorial, so I'm a fake gamer. Yay, fake gamer time! Woo! When it comes to the next CD, it's actually another game-related CD, although I don't actually own the game. I own the sequel to it. That's right, it's The World Ends With You, which comes with this little freaking uh, cardboard cutout, which has like an imprint, which I can never show on camera because my camera's not good enough quality. It has like little steel bars as well as it has the logo is oftentimes used in the game itself power is yet unknown for this cd because it's the first one that doesn't come with the little insert thing that every japanese cd comes with it doesn't actually come with it believe it or not it's the same throughout every region it also comes with a square enix code which i'm sure is expired but if you want to use it go ahead and use it don't care anyway um yeah the cd doesn't exactly hold in that well it keeps falling out which is awesome but the actual cd is just like this little matte thing with a little logo on the bottom uh, yeah, it has a steel thing all throughout. It's a freaking nice ass CD and uh, it's it's one of many uh, sound selections for the world that ends with you or as cringe fans call it Twooey. You know Twooey kind of sounds like a thing that a tween would say, you know, if they're like playing Hoppa Hotel like they'd be like, hello guys, my favorite soundtrack is Twooey. Except for they say that in text because that's how we were back then. That's how people were. I'm sure people still do that. I'm sure some of them are creepy adults. You know, I should probably talk about the actual soundtrack itself. I have a really bad habit of not talking about things and just talking about their packaging. So the soundtrack is really good. Um, you you know, it's not exactly uh, groundbreaking. It's got really good motifs or light motifs if you, if you want to be uh, particular. And uh, it's got really good, you know, like vocals. It's 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 really catchy, really really hypnotic, if you will. Uh, the remaster soundtrack is just as good as the original, in my opinion. Uh, although the best way to play the game is the DS version because the controls are just garbage on every other version of the game. But the soundtrack's better, so that's that's one positive. And the visuals are better on the other versions. Just can't get past those controls, unfortunately. But going back to the actual soundtrack itself, uh, yeah, I mentioned earlier, but there's a little bit of weird vocal stuff, like like that Twister song, which is featured several times on the album. There's this lady who goes, the power is yet unknown. Like she says it like exactly like that. It's kind of funny because there's a Japanese version on there as well, and she just goes, the power is yet unknown. Like the Japanese lady who's speaking Japanese is better than the lady speaking English who I'm assuming is also Japanese. But that's weird. It's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you want to say it like that, it's fine. And you know that uh, that sequel, that sequel, Neo Where the World Ends With You, uh, you know, people didn't buy it. I bought it. I supported the game. 
developers, but buying the game. People were begging for a sequel for years, and yet nobody bought it. But the soundtrack for that game, I actually, like, listened to the lyrics of Storm, you know, the one that goes, It's me, what? Against the world! Like, that one I listened to again, and, like, there's, like, this freaking line about, like, about, like, <laughs> like, putting honey on toast. Like, the guy goes, like, something about, like, there's, like, he likes putting honey on toast, and now it's delicious. So I'm like, what the fuck does that have to do with the song? It's, like, one of those things where it's, like, I, I just, you need, you need to feel a line in, in the bar, so he's, like, just mentioned like yo i like honey on toast bro my favorite i'm like there's just weird shit like that lyrics wise with the whole series like honestly i know it's weird to say series there's only two games but some weird ass shit going on in the music overall i mean come on so i might end up including uh a part where i talk about timu stuff that comes in because there is a timu package coming in uh relatively soon so who knows what I'll do there. So let's get on to the four games that I have left to talk about because I've already gotten done with the CDs at this point and I've already talked about one game, Jump Cut. Sorry, I'm wearing something different now. I decided to uh, cover up my hair because it's a freaking mess. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Uh, yeah, we're talking about games now. Let's start off with the only, talking about the only Japanese region game this video. It's the NTSCJ variety, if you will. It's Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. And it actually does come with a code, which I can show because I've already actually used. So this one I guarantee you can't use. It comes with a little code that gives a DLC, so... Fuck you! Bought it from Tsurugaya, and actually it said it was used, but believe it or not, it was new. It was legit new. It, it like, it was it had never been opened. Uh, and the CD also came from Tsurugaya. Um, it was decently used. It, it wasn't exactly, uh, new. Again, I used the whole free shipping promotion, so there's that. Uh, Ghost Trick Fan the Detective is a visual novel slash sort of puzzle game in the style of something like Ace Attorney. Except for you follow a guy who dies and has the ability to bring people back to life and whatnot. And he's trying to figure out why he died because some guy fucking just ganked him, bro. He's about to gank this one red-haired lady, but uh, he saved him. Spoilers, I know. I'm not very far into the game, like with all these games, believe it or not. And, uh, yeah, um, it's, uh, it's a good game. It's by Capucom. I'm surprised it's even got a remaster. This is another game that's based off the DS. You know, I know I talked about Twoey. Anyway, yeah, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective is a game based off the DS. It's nice visuals. Uh, it has a sort of letterboxed, uh, approach. Kind of like my video right now. Uh, when it comes to the actual games. But the cutscenes are remastered in full widescreen. Oh, and the controls are fine, given how they used to be on DS. Next up was one I got from a local game store that was running a promotion where if it's your birthday which over this coming up on the 12th so happy birthday to me i'm turning uh, 26. anyway basically uh yeah on that day uh and for the whole month i can use a discount 10 percent off of a certain item i end up selling a few games so i still like six so r.i.p to those games i've shown throughout these videos over the years they're not rustin pepperoni or not not quite they'll be in some other collector's hands where they'll enjoy it i'm sure you know funny enough the, the game store that i sold those games and some other games in the past i've seen some of my games still on the store shelves like each time i go so it's, there's no guarantee that my stuff even sells but i'm always like Hey, that's my game. So there you go. Enough dilly dallying. Let's talk about Metroid Prime Remastered. I ended up paying thirty dollars for it, or a little bit under thirty dollars. But yeah, I'm pretty freaking uh, hyped about that. I actually did play it on uh, on the at the library. I ended up getting a library copy and, and playing it there. Although I didn't save, funny enough, so I had to start the save all over again. No big deal. I wasn't that far into it. And of course, I I did play Metroid Prime back in the day on the demo disc. Came with the GameCube that my parents bought me and my brother Patrick. Uh, for for our birthday because we have uh, birthdays that are 13 days apart so they collectively bought us a GameCube and we played that and I played the Metroid Prime uh, demo disc incessantly before we actually got any sort of games so I am familiar with that I've emulated the game in widescreen through Dolphin um, through like a through like the Wii port or I, I guess I just modified the GameCube port I'm not played two or three but they're not even on Switch so I can't even play them if I want uh, when, it, when it comes to the, to the remake it looks way better the controls are actually pretty decent. I, I use the like hybrid controls for my playthrough. The game is really freaking good. I, and I got through the opening and I'm on the first planet now. I can't wait to play more. It's going to be freaking a hype. Believe it or not, I do actually own a GameCube style controller with motion controls. That's why I played it on, on my TV. And uh, with this game... 
it has uh, an alternate cover on the back. Although I'm not going to uh, be switching it out because I usually like things on the back to have like the ESRP and all that. I like to look, I like it to look consistent, you know. Next up is a game that I've already shown you at some point, but I think I did mention in the previous video that I did end up selling my uh, Shin Chan game and I actually got it in the mail. It's called Shin Chan, Me and the Professors on Summer Vacation, The Endless Seven Day Journey. This game, I sold the Japanese version, but I finally only had the English version, and despite being a grrr, limited run release. There's no freaking manual. I thought they were known for their manuals, but apparently not when it comes to this release. This release is just your typical Switch standard Switch release with no manual. Yeah, um, it's actually nice going through the game and being able to understand what exactly they're saying. You know, it's kind of cool actually paying attention to stuff and figuring out stuff about the game that I didn't even know. I'm actually like to, to the point where I was in the previous game. I've even shown a recording previously on my channel from a recording session through my capture card, and I'm waiting for the next game in the series to get localized, the one some Endless Summer Vacation series that's based off a different anime that's in Japan. Play is just promoting a whole lot, but it's not in English, so I'm not gonna bother. Last time I thought, oh, there's no way this game's getting a localization, but it did, because everything on Switch gets a localization. Pretty much everything. Eventually, everything does. There's like no Japanese exclusives. There's Japanese exclusive physicals, but there's no Japanese exclusive digital games anymore, hardly at all. And finally, for this session of recordings, Again, I'm going to be including a part from uh, a, my team order when that shows up today. I'll be I'll be tacking that onto the end of this video. So surprise, this is a another bits and bobs sort of mini episode, if you will. It's another limited limited run game. Grr, those greedy bastards. But this time it's one that I actually bought uh, from that that same game store that I sold those games. Uh, yeah, and it was only twenty dollars, which I'm pretty happy about. It's Star Wars Republic Commando. It's kind of like in the style of like a Ghost Recon game or something like a Tom Clancy. It's a game where you bring your your uh, your fellow clone troopers uh, around by giving them commands. Well, it's very light as opposed to the more sort of intimate and detailed uh, Tom Clancy affairs. Uh, this game does indeed come with a manual and also comes with a card, a holographic card. Some guy didn't actually sell his uh, card or or, or uh, keep it. It's actually in a different style than all the other cards I own, so that's kind of disappointing. But whatever, who cares? A limited run can suck a wee wee. I'm not even going to bother displaying it, I'm just going to keep it in the box. It's published by Asper. It's one of those Star Wars games where uh, it's an old style sort of PS2 era game, but it's still worth playing. Although I wish it had uh, motion controls, that'd be pretty cool if it had a hybrid style control just like Metroid Prime. That'd be interesting. Uh, I also own it on PC, but my save file was already on the Switch because I played a trial. That's how I knew I even liked the game because there was a Nintendo Switch Online trial and so I actually played it through there and I wanted to keep my saves. So there you go i did that and i'm actually uh, a little bit decently far into it and i can't wait to play a more anyway uh let's move on to eventually later on when we time travel to the part where i talk about the team order bye bye hi guys i'm back ever so briefly to finally talk about the team order that just came in about 30 or so minutes ago first off we have believe it or not it's metal thumbsticks for my xbox Series X controller. It moves around quite nicely. I mean, I just installed them and it does indeed still turn on, so it does work. So there you go. I mean, I didn't really mess with anything besides just taking off the cover and putting it back on pretty quickly. I mean, it was a pretty smooth operation. I mean, overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. It turned out pretty freaking alright. Next up, uh, we have the actual screwdrivers themselves that I used to uh, actually just screwdriver. It included one for like the triggers, but I'm not going to bother with those. Uh, here's a screwdriver that I use to unscrew all the screws on the Xbox Series X controller so I could actually install the thumbsticks. Uh, these are actually nice quality. I was, I was expecting them to be worse quality, but they're actually not too bad quality. Uh, they actually feel like they're uh, solid. And they're actually magnetic too, which is a big plus. And finally, when it comes to the team order, again, a very small team order, I did order... Actually, I ordered four more things. Uh, I ordered this uh, this uh, Switch uh, uh, screen protector. You can actually see the air bubbles on camera. Camera. I just installed it. The air bubbles will dissipate eventually as long as they don't break the freaking switch like I have in the past when it comes to the screen protectors I should be fine as long as I don't break the glass but it, even if it does it means it's doing its job but yeah there's a screen protector but finally for real and you might have heard these jostling around in my hands it's freaking uh, a Rayquaza pin right here it's a big ass pin I was not expecting it to be this big and the same goes for a grow is it Groudion or Groudon I don't know here's the others uh, legendary from uh, Gen 
Gen 3 Pokemon, the one I grew up with. And finally we have Kyogre. Kyogre is right here. And uh, I'm gonna put those on that little pin board back there. We're gonna call it quits for the whole fucking video. So...